Okay, so today we are going to look at uh, transportation, launch, and appending. I think yesterday we were looking at uh, loadout and lifting. I think the difference is very clear. Loadout is by skidding or by trailers, and lifting by means of crane. It's basically a handling technique. Today, what we are going to just quickly look at uh, uh, transportation and then installation in uh, offshore. Transportation is a means of uh, taking this structure from fabrication yard to the final uh, installation site. So, mostly I think I have shown you some pictures yesterday. Normally, we transport using uh, uh, flat bottom barges, so just a rectangular pontoons. Now, when you try to do a launch of the jacket, means again you are going to slide it away from the floating structure, uh, floating system either barge or ship. Now, in order to slide it away, you need to have a pre-arranged skids like what you see in the picture. You got two parallel skids will be very similar to our railway track, you know. Only thing is stronger enough to carry the jacket or top sides whichever uh, you are transporting. In launch, normally you do not launch the deck. What will happen? It will go into water. The superstructure needs to be only installed by means of lifting, not by means of launching. So, jacket will be launched so that it can go into water. So, basically typical barge. So, what you see in this picture is a rectangular pontoon length, width and uh, depth. Of course, little bit of uh, chamfering in the uh, bow side and stern side just for uh, towing purpose. Otherwise, it looks exactly like a rectangular pontoon divided into several compartments. Each of this int mark you see here, this kind of uh, marking is one compartment is divided into several subdivisions. The idea behind why we divide this into several subdivisions is basically to make sure the barge is stable even some of the compartments become damaged. For example, one of them may leak or may have damaged due to several uh, uh, issues during the transport time or corrosion. So, that is why you divide the barges into various sub compartments. You see here, here I think uh, almost uh, 10 times 4 I think. So, 40 compartments are there. So, the, 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 the damage happens to one compartment means 1 in 40 is the, the probability of failure. Whereas, if you do not have a compartment, one sim single simple pontoon, what will happen? Any damage to a one, one location will actually fail the whole barge. So, that is the idea behind uh, ship design, any floating structures design, even jacket design. We will see later when we do a complete jacket, every member is buoyant, but in one member, if it is flooded due to damage, this jacket still will be able to float because it is only a small portion of total system. So, that is the redundancy we try to create. So, if you look at this barge is 40 compartments and also yesterday we were seeing uh, ballasting. Remember one of the bar barge carrying the crane on one side and another side we want to do ballasting. So, if you have compartments controlling the location and precise amount and quantity will be easy to manipulate. So, that is why this compartment business is very useful. So, as you are getting introduced to floating structures, you should be able to differentiate between fixed structures and floating systems, how the stability is achieved. So, typical launch barge, what is the difference between a launch barge and a cargo barge? Means cargo barge means it can only carry, cannot do a launching. You will not have these parallel skid rails, that is the difference. Otherwise, the barge is the same for both purposes and these parallel skids allow the jacket to be slided away without damage. The idea is you, 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 you have a nice skid arranged in such a way that the jacket can slide without much of uh, uh, damage to the structure. In a slightly different arrangement, you can see here that red color is the launch skid or launch rail or, uh, or the parallel arrangement through which the jacket will skid away. The right side, the gray color which is called rocker arm, which can rotate as the jacket moves towards the end. We will see from uh, the next few pictures. So, you can see in this picture that the triangular portion is basically pivotal about this point. As the jacket moves down forward, it will be trying to rotate, so that uh, you do not see a sudden uh, failure. So, how do we make the jacket to slide away? Very easy. Several ways of doing it, either you can push it physically by by a device, which will be um, 
requiring to be pre-installed at the back end of the jacket. For example, if I want to push it from this end, I can do that by some hydraulic jack. So, I can pre-arrange a hydraulic jack and then give a push. But normally, when you have a horizontal in this kind of plane, what happens is pushing that becomes little harder because you have to make the, the overcoming of static friction. So, you may need a big capacity jack. So, in order to reduce the requirement, what we normally do is ballast the barge in the forward end. In this case, it is actually a stern end, you know. So, you ballast few tanks, not all the tanks, few tanks in this area. We saw several tanks were there, no. So, you just flood them. So, the barge gets tilted. Sometimes, if the barge tilting itself will allow the jacket to slide away because of the inclination. If still the friction force between the jacket and the barge is higher, then we can actually give a external push either by means of uh, winch. Sometimes, you do actually have a winch to pull it and it can actually slide down or you can give a hydraulic jack at the back end. So, the, the, the jacket sliding down has to overcome the friction between the jacket and the barge. So, how do we minimize it? That is the idea behind it. So, you actually can lubricate the skidway. What you saw here, the top surface of the skidway can be nicely lubricated with lubricants. So, that when you actually trim it, the meaning of trimming is nothing but making the flooding of some of the compartments in the forward end of the barge. So, that the tilting along the longitudinal direction will allow the jacket to slide on its own weight. You understand the idea, no? So, basically this is called a trimming or trim angle. This angle typically about 2 degrees or to 4 degrees. Imagine if you trim this to 50 degrees, what will happen? The barge will capsize. So, basically that is why we need to limit this trimming or sloping of the barge along the longitudinal direction by minimum like 2 degrees to 3 degrees, maximum 4 degrees. So, this is what is going to happen when you actually allow the jacket to slide away and trying to trim the uh, barge still cannot then you give a external uh, kick or push by means of a mechanical device which is prefixed at the back end of the jacket. And you see here there are several uh, sequences, sequence 1, 2, 3, 4 up to 6. You could see that the stage 6 jacket and the barge has already separated. That means, they will be moving away in the opposite direction because of the displacement of the water. The barge will move backwards, the jacket will move forward. A typical picture, you see this is the critical condition where the jacket is partly supported, partly very little on the on water and fully supported on the jacket, but at the same time it is on the pivot. So, the jacket is trying to rotate because of the gravitational forces. Imagine if that rotation part is not there, what will happen? The tail end of the jacket will fall on the barge itself as it moves down may damage severely both barge as well as. So, in order to prevent we have got this pivotal arrangement. So, that the back end of the jacket is lifted off above the barge surface. So, that it can just nicely dive into water without damaging both jacket and barge. So, at the end of the day what we require is the jacket needs to come down without hitting the seabed and go up and float horizontally, reasonably horizontally. This will only happen if you have sufficient buoyancy. If you do not have sufficient buoyancy, you may lose the jacket as it goes dive, it may actually hit the seabed. So, the momentum during this diving is very important. We need to calculate what is the dynamic forces the resistance coming from water because of the, the viscosity effects in with respect to the jacket surfaces and you need to evaluate what is the weight, what is the buoyancy and then find out whether it will go and hit the seabed or not. So, this simulation we need to do simple simulation, you need to know the center of buoyancy, center of gravity and the forces arising from the diving time. Basically, the velocity of the jacket is known, you can calculate the reverse forces exactly opposite to the hydrodynamics. You know, the structure is stationary, wave is coming and generating forces. In here, structure is moving, 
but this is static water. Exactly opposite the same wave theory what you are going to study can apply here and then calculate back the forces during the time of diving. Now, why we need this one to float horizontally? Why not we just simply allow the jacket to go and then sit on seabed upright? We could actually design a jacket to, to go and make vertical position when it is diving. That is what you normally when you dive into a swimming pool, you try to come up vertically by making balance of your buoyancy and, and the center of gravity is down. So, you can design a jacket instead of floating horizontally at the end of this launching, you can make sure that the jacket floats vertically upright. If you have the position of center of gravity and position of center of buoyancy designed suitably, but that is called a self appending jackets. We do not need a, any additional effort to make it vertical. In this case, we make it float horizontal, then manually we try to make it vertical that is depends on the design. So, what we require is something like this at the end of the day we need the jacket to float nicely horizontal, but visible above sea water. So, that uh, you do not need to search for it that if it is below water something is wrong you do not know where it is might have already gone down to sea bed. So, basic idea is you need to see the jacket number one you also need some portion of this jacket visible above water. So, that you know see the here there is a platform some small platform is arranged there because <coughs> using this platform only people can go there and connect these uh, wire ropes to crane otherwise you would not be able to access the jacket. So, there is a small platform provided on top of this. So, that the crane will come on that location and then try to lift it off to make it vertical because without a crane you cannot make it vertical. So, that is the idea behind why it has to float horizontal. For example, if it does not float horizontal float inclined what will happen? Nobody is able to go and climb up the platform what is available here. So, that is why we need to make it reasonably horizontal 1 degree 2 degree is not a problem, but if it is 45 degree then it becomes a serious business. So, you can see from this picture we do load out in reverse direction the big end of the jacket or bottom of the jacket goes first you, you, you need to see the difference the bottom end of the jacket goes into the bar first, but when it is launched exactly opposite the launching is done from the, the front end of the jacket goes into water first. So, the sequence needs to be carefully manipulated before you fabricate it because if you fabricate it in a wrong direction then it becomes a reasonable difficult task to launch. So, when you want to do a launching of a jacket during the fabrication the orientation of the jacket should be in such a way that the bottom end is facing towards sea. So, that you just move it backwards and then during launching you can you see the, the idea so that you know when you are actually designing things in the yard when you become a site engineer or a yard engineer you should know which things to go first. Typically when you do a transportation time on a launch bus you see in the red color the launch rail. So, basically is a is a skid nothing but a fabricated plate girder I think most of you will be familiar with steel girders no steel girders very strong enough to support this full structure on top of them and you may actually uh, have welding uh, to the barge by means of additional members. So, that during transportation they do not fall down sea fastening you know otherwise what will happen during the sea voyage jacket might slip away into water. So, basic idea is when you do a transportation using a flat bottom barge something like this you will have tying members normally when you see the cargo going by uh, barges or uh, by ships you see that wire ropes holding down sea fastening to barges. Here we use structural members because the loads arising here will have both compression as well as tension. So, you need to have structural members to connect it to barge as well as to the structure. So, basically the terminology of sea fastening is nothing but is a tie down to barge and launch rail is again nothing but a simple girder provided with the arrangement such that the skidding becomes easier. So, lubricated surfaces normally the top surface will be provided with timber most of the launch kits we use timber, but on top of timber you may have a uh, bearing pads which will reduce the, uh, the friction like Teflon pads 
are available with friction between uh, steel to steel is how much? Steel to steel is greater than 0.3, whereas if you use a Teflon pads, you can reduce to, you know what is static friction, right? So basically less than 0.1. So if, if you use a proper lubricated surfaces, can bring down less than 0.1. The reason why we need to reduce the friction, typical example of a jacket, for example, if it is a 5000 ton jacket, if the friction is 0.3, the amount of effort required to push the jacket is 30 percent of 5000. So, if you imagine it is more than 1000 tons, where do you get 1000 tons capacity jacks if the jacket is not moving down? So, that is why you have to reduce the friction so that the effort required to launch the jacket is lesser. Sometimes if the friction is more even after trimming 3 degrees, jacket will stay there because the frictional resistance is higher than the component of gravity coming down in the inclined direction. So, that is why we may have to do this kind of uh, manipulation. So, another picture showing the, the, the location of a rocker arm, basically that is a pin jointed which actually can rotate and uh, basically will provide. So, this is the situation when the whole jacket is getting supported on this rocker arm. So, you can imagine this pin jointed connection to the bars needs to be designed with full load transfer to you know the, the, the pin joint. So, that is where uh, you will see that uh, lot of design checks needs to be done on the bar side also because it is rotating. So, as long as the center of gravity is, is on the left side of the rocker arm, the jacket will not slide. So, as soon as the COG moves down right side of the rocker, then immediately starts to slide down into water. So, that is a condition we need to see and once it is already in water, part of the jacket is in water, part of the jacket is on the, the rocker arm and in this time the bottom of the jacket will carry heavy load because this anyway right side is on water. So, buoyancy will provide additional support whereas on the left side there is no buoyancy, but full load is coming on the jacket members. So, these are some of the scenarios you may have to check during the launching process. So, once you, you do the launching and you get the jacket floating in this fashion, so what we need is to make it upright. So, how do we make it upright is a very simple idea. So, if you look at this picture, there are 6 stages just typically given here for uh, uh, information purpose. So, for example, the first stage still floating horizontally. So, you bring a crane in the near vicinity, connect the crane to the jacket members at the pre defined points. We already have fixed uh, certain points where you can attach the cables. Now, when you start lifting what will happen? The jacket will come above water, but you would not be able to make it upright unless you bring the center of gravity downwards. So, what we need to do is we need to flood water at the bottom and as you lift. So, that means the jacket members some of them larger enough to hold larger volume of water. So, you need to have pre-arranged pipes such that you fill up water or open a valve. So, that the bottom portion becomes heavier. Otherwise, what will happen if you, if you do not fill up water at the bottom, you, you lift it off and then leave the crane, jacket will come back to its original horizontal position. So, what we need to make sure is as you move upwards the top portion, you also need to flood the bottom portion. So, this process of manipulation of center of gravity and center of buoyancy is called appending. So, as soon as you reach near vertical, you can see here, we need to make sure that at that time, every time the jacket bottom portion is not hitting the seabed and minimum clearance needs to be maintained. It is not half a meter, 1 meter, minimum we need 10 percent of water depth. If the water depth is 50 meter, we need to maintain a clearance of at least 5 meter because you see this is open sea condition and when you are doing this operation if the jacket is going to up and down it may just accidentally go and hit the seabed. So, that is why the clearance theoretically what you are predicting needs to be 10 percent of water depth or 5 meter. If it is 100 meter water depth you have 10 meter the minimum is 5 meter. So, typically about 5 meter is a number that you need to maintain 5 meter is a lot because if you have even a 3 meter wave height during the oscillation, you may not get 5 meter heave movement. So, that is why. So, this appending operation 
is is a is little bit of a difficult procedure because you remember you have to open a valve for a bottom of the jacket how do you open the valve nobody is able to go there so we need to have a remote control devices wired up to the control room before we launch the jacket so this is one of the difficult task because the wires will break away during launch isn't it so what we normally have is we bring the wires all the way up to the top of the jacket and terminate and with the control panel so and when the jacket is launched and it's floating in water you see in this condition the wires would have already got to this point already bring and then tied up there now you will take one more cable from this point to the barge control room so you connected them then you start operating your control devices so that the valve on this part will be able to open take the sea water inside it's just a simple device nothing but a pipe with a valve fitted at the each of the section of the pipe and basically once you have such provision the control room on the bars they can operate each of the compartment valves opening water will go inside as the water goes inside say for example this is the compartment as the water goes inside you need to hold the the crane and start lifting otherwise what will happen because of the momentum the jacket will start go in the anti clockwise direction go and hit the sea bed straight away so we need to just lift so this sequence needs to be worked out what time i open the valve what time i lift so this operation is called appending and appending in water so basically this once you do this and when the jacket is almost near vertical and make sure that at that time still clearance is available and start lowering gradually and just set down on sea bed as long as the weight is more than buoyancy the jacket will definitely sit on sea bed so positive or or the the downward force must be higher otherwise it will still it will still float it's a very simple idea buoyancy is greater means will not be able to go down so this you see this jacket one of the jacket for float over operation uh, we will see four or five types of jacket configurations so now you could see that the jacket when it is uh, planned for uh, launching you have a parallel skid arranged so you see in this picture we have uh, one one member and another member arranged in a parallel way in addition to the four corner members which are actually supporting the superstructure so this this arrangement it is not necessary if the jacket is not launched you know basically we inserted this additional members just only for the purpose of just making parallel skidway so if you go to another jacket you can see here on the left side is actually called four leg uh, eight legged jacket but two of the legs were purposely made parallel whereas on the right hand side is a four legged jacket but we inserted additional two parallel skids only for the purpose of um launching so either way what we require for launching is basically two parallel legs so in this case automatically we got uh, two extra legs because the jacket was planned for a larger footprint area so when you want to design a uh, jacket for say 60 meters by 40 meter you can plan for a eight leg jacket because 60 meter if you look at two legs for example the spacing will be too large designing a girder or support structure for superstructure could become a difficult proposition that's why you can see here the four leg versus eight leg you could see a difference how the arrangement for launching is made whereas if you look at this previous jacket this is purposely made for a slightly different installation we will see this one tomorrow this float over installation basically uh, how the top side is installed and basically you you see the legs are made slant and the edge or corner legs the inner legs are actually terminated at the certain level below sea water because later you will see in the previous picture barge is going to bring the the superstructure without the aid of a crane we can actually dock the structure on top of a pre installed jacket this is called a float tower we'll see the details uh, uh, tomorrow probably we can even continue today we had a so this float over operation 
we will just see how the um, deck is installed. So, once the jacket is launched made vertical and then we could bring and install the superstructure by lifting only because you you have to make sure that the superstructure is not become wet number 1. Number 2 you should have sufficient capacity to lift the superstructure and put it on top of the jacket which is installed previously. Now, there are two ways of doing it one is by simply lifting and installing on top this can only be a possible if you have the sufficient capacity of the crane you know. So, if it is not possible what normally is done in the past is to break the superstructure into several sub components may be 2 or 3 or 4 depending on the capacity of the crane and assemble one by one which is commonly used for so many years successfully. Only problem is the interconnections have to be done offshore for example, you have module 1 module 2 which does each purpose one of them can be a power generation module another one can be a process. When you actually install these two separately the cables and pipes connecting them structures interconnecting you may have to spend lot of time offshore which sometimes become very troublesome. So, in order to avoid this new way of doing installation without the aid of a crane which you saw just now a picture the structure is brought by single piece, but then it goes by means of a docking which is called a float over operation. So, we will just see the comparison something like this you see on the left side picture jacket is already installed and basically the ship is bringing the top sides completely fabricated tested and everything is done in the yard and it comes in between the two portions pre arranged in the jacket and then comes inside and sets down because while coming in it comes at a slightly higher level and then ballast down the barge or the ship it gets seated on the jacket, but it is easy to say, but what you can see is the, the hydrodynamic interaction between the ship the structure and the wave. So, we need to see how difficult is it. So, basically that operation is normally done only for large top sites like if you have top sites of 10,000 tons and you want to install by lifting you may have to break down into several pieces like 5 pieces 10 pieces which may make the installation time longer. So, that is why this, this option is uh, introduced in uh, 1980s and has been growing in number of installations for last uh, so many times because it is very cheap compared to the other uh, installation. Only availability of such semi submersible vessel this type of vessel is supposed to be a little difficulty because number of them available in all over the world is about maybe less than 10. So, getting them for your project could actually be potential trouble. So, you see one of the picture transporting at full top sides full superstructure in single piece and this is the mother vessel which is basically a, a semi sub based. So, that you can actually submerge the whole thing substantially into water in fact, the full hull can go down except a small portion in the front and back. So, that is the idea behind. So, basic idea is this vessel needs to be specially designed not all ships and not all barges can be used for this purpose. If you take a flat bottom barge and do this it will capsize. So, you need to have a specially arranged uh, vessel which has got this uh, submersible capacity. I think the idea is basically every time when you have offshore platform the platforms becoming bigger and bigger. It is not that the earlier requirements were smaller and the present requirements are bigger. It is basically depending on the capability see earlier times I think on the day one I have shown you few pictures of several platforms in uh, one location you know one by one you arrange. Those days the capability of installations were so small that we wanted to put only small platforms add one more and add one more. Now, you can see the capacity for installation is so large that we want to economize instead of putting 10 platforms you make one platform together to produce larger quantity and make the platform size bigger and that is exactly the idea behind to economize number of structures are getting reduced in one platform you put probably 3 platform production lines. So, you can see that uh, the weights are increasing and that is where you can see this picture you can see the congestion you know is fully packed you would not be able to 
actually see through if you go there it will be fully uh, fitted with equipments and uh, pipes and cables and stuff. So, the limited availability of offshore lift crane is the biggest problem you know most of the cranes in the vicinity in this region probably from Middle East all the way up to East China you can see that maybe 3000 ton is the capacity available whereas, if you go to Europe or to maybe Gulf of Mexico you may see that uh, 10000 tons is easily available, but the one of the problem is bringing the crane from that side to here becomes too expensive the, the mobilization cost will be very high. So, that is why we should survive and use the cranes available in this region. So, 10000 to 30000 ton is that type of number nowadays most of the platforms are capacity is that much of capacity like 20000 to 30000 small crane capacity we may have end up 10 pieces. So, 10 pieces integration offshore becomes really troublesome. So, you see here how a modular installation for the last 40 50 years we once the jacket is installed and you see here this type of installation is feasible only if you have 8 legs. For example, you have 4 legs, but I want to have 2 pieces installed is it possible? may be not feasible then we need to introduce two more dummy legs which may actually make the jacket bigger. So, that is that is one of the worry if you do not have that middle two legs you will not be able to split the top sides into two pieces you still have to install in one piece. So, you see the reason why constant thinking or the design is all about installation offshore structures all about planning how you will install if you imagine yourself that can it be installed using the machinery that I have. So, that is the question that you have to ask yourself when you design. So, the design is fully governed by such activities to the great extent. So, then you split horizontally right now into two pieces also additional connection is given. So, that they become structures together and then you can see here you place the other modules of you know arranged pre arranged in such a way that they become self contained only the interconnection will become necessary if there is a communication if there is a electrical system or if there is a process. So, basically you have to do this kind of pre conceptual idea. So, that you make them block boxes of each capability one could be process other could be power producing other could be living for example, you may have a living module where people will be something very similar to a quarters you know, but not one two probably. 100 people can live in that uh, building. So, you just make a building module and put it separately. So, this you could see that this is looks nice idea is good, but the one of the problem is installation time and the integration time offshore could lead to a 3 to 4 months of work, which you can save if you do the other way of simple single float over technique. So, that you just after installation in few days you can start the platform, whereas in this it may take at least 3 to 4 months to do the offshore interconnections and then you start up by the time it may be too late and that is how it is going on. And the disadvantage is you need a minimum 8 legs to split otherwise what will happen the bottom portion still will need to be single the top area you can actually go for split one by one. So, this idea have to be worked out depending on what is the configuration of jacket what is the configuration of your superstructure and weight and then decide. So, float over is basically and that is. So, having discussed the difficulty of that installation people have desire to reduce this offshore time. So, as early as 1976 I think one of the float over, but not for the largest weight it was actually for 3000 ton only. And at that time they were trying to devise this idea how we can actually bring and dock this whole structure very similar to load out you know load out we had trailers going underneath lift it off and then move to the barge and then set it down. Here the, the ship is going to take this weight and travel to the site and then in the floating condition it is going to ballast down by means of filling water and then set it on top of the structure which is already installed. So, that idea is very very interesting only thing is it is done in open sea compared to trailers are on land and then 
sheltered water. So, that is where we need to just do that idea. Now, the second idea is jacket legs are spaced such that the ship can go in between. So, uh, that is that is why you once you decide to do float over, now you can realize the jacket design is changing. You cannot have a conventional jacket design where you are having all the members everywhere. Now, you have to split the jacket into two parts left side, right side, middle part cannot have any structural members something like this. You see here original design you might have had a bracing system like this is not it big members holding them together whereas, now it is gone. So, the jacket becomes may be too slender is not it. So, that means these members needs to be designed appropriately. So, that is where the difference comes uh, you can see here. Now, you see this whole top side is fabricated in a single piece completely one piece integrated and tested ready for occupation you know offshore you bring it and basically and when you bring this bars with the structure you need to bring it at a higher elevation that means about a meter higher than normally it should float. So, that when you come to the location jacket is still on the side. So, if you go to this picture there is enough gap enough gap when it is arriving otherwise what will happen you cannot enter it will hit. So, you bring it at a higher level and then once you match the legs then you can actually set down.